Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. That's right. And if you got your Bibles, you can turn to Jonah chapter 1. Jonah 1. And I'm continuing our theme of revival messages. In Jonah chapter 1, I'm going to begin at verse 1. Jonah 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. Preach to this city of Nineveh. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with him to Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man, every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, wake up. (laughs) Call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. The story of Jonah. The story of Jonah. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. They were the arch enemies to Israel. They were hated people by Israel. They were... Murderers, you could say they, they funded terrorism towards Israel. It's around that same general location around Iran, Syria, all in, in that area. So they were enemies. They were hated by Israel. They were hated by Jonah, the prophet of God, hated Nineveh. And God called Jonah to preach to these enemies of Israel, whom Israel hated, whom Jonah hated. And Jonah's like, nope, mm-mm, not this guy. <laughs> this city deserves judgment. This city deserves to go to hell. I, these are my enemies. I am not going. And so we just read it. He flees. It's interesting. It says two times in verse 3, from the presence of the Lord, as if he's going to flee from the presence of the Lord. Really? I mean, Jonah's a prophet. Jonah has the anointing, the prophetic anointing of God on his life, so you would think Jonah would know, I cannot run from the press. But you know, just sin causes you to, disobedience causes you to do dumb stuff, doesn't it? You don't think rationally. So he tries to flee from the presence of God. He goes to Joppa. He boards a ship that's heading to Tarshish. Running from the presence of God, he boards the ship. He goes to sleep. God sends a storm. The sailors woke him up. The captain woke him up. And most of you probably know the story if you read the rest of chapter 1 and chapter 2. They, there's a little agreement there. Uh, Jonah tells them what's up. And anyways, they throw Jonah overboard and a big giant fish swallows Jonah. Jonah in the belly of the whale. How many of you heard of Jonah in the belly of the whale? Well, you don't know if it's well or not because it doesn't say it's a well it's a big fish now when you think of the story of Jonah that's what you think of you think of the big the big fish I'm not preaching on that today I'm not preaching on Jonah and the big fish what I'm what I'm focusing on today is the fact that it says Jonah he he fled he ran from God and he went to sleep he went to sleep God is blowing. It it says God sent the storm. God sent the wind. It's blowing and rocking. God's rocking the boat. He's, he's, He's shaking the boat. The storm's raging. People are about to die. The the ship's about to break apart. And and Jonas, Jonas, the Jonas brothers were in the bottom of the fish. And Jonah's, he's clueless. He's in la-la land. He's sleeping away. 
he's sleeping away. I mean, that's interesting to me. The, the Septuagint manuscripts insert the word here, the ancient manuscripts, they insert the word that, that he was snoring. And I thought that's comical that you know, the boat's rocking, pieces are flying off, the, the storm's raging, and he's just... away he's oblivious you know that's that's taking sleeping through a storm to a whole new level I mean shaking and blowing see I'm preaching today on wake up wake up Jonah's oblivious to the storm Jonah's sleeping Jonah's snoring Jonah's in a deep sleep and, and the captain says, wake up. And you know, there's application here for us because maybe like Jonah, maybe your ship's about to break apart. The ship of life, your circumstances. I'm about to go under. I'm about to sink. The storm's blowing. God is blowing. You're, you're oblivious to the fact that God is shaking your boat. <laughs> He's shaking your boat. He's, how many of you believe God is shaking the nation right now? If you don't see that, then wake up. Wake up. God is shaking. God is blowing. He's trying to get our attention. But, but all along, God is, is, is shaking, and, and you're in the bottom of the boat. Oh, you get jarred a little bit. Hit the snooze button. You know, that's how a lot of Christians are. God's blowing. Storms blowing. The, the boat's breaking apart. It, we're, we're, our life's about to sink, and we're... Snoring away. You know, when you're sleeping physically... Now, i got to admit, I, I'm one that loves to sleep. I like to sleep. I've got to have about 8, 9, 12, 20 hours a night <laughs> of sleep. How many of you uh, need a lot of sleep like me? I'm like a little baby, a lot of sleep. See that? We're, we're, we're a minority here. How many of you are morning people? You just like getting up in the morning. Oh, it's a be See, I hate every one of you. You're, you're the people. You're the people I want to punch in the morning, you know, and you Look, I'm, I'm, don't, don't talk to me. <laughs> I, I got to have about three cups of Starbucks. It you know, if it was up to me, elders, we'd be having Sunday morning service at like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. That would be, if that was, that was up to me, we'd be, that's right. I, I, but, but some people, they're just morning people. They wake up, and it, it's always a beautiful morning, and they're alert, and they're, they, they read. The, 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 you know, they're, they're, they got their Bibles, and they're reading, and there's joy and birds singing. And, and then there's people like us that we got to be left alone. It's like, I mean, the grump. I, you know, it, I, you know my, my salvation don't kick in until like 12 o'clock. That's, that's when I'm like... I was, talking, I was talking to somebody the other day, you know, the, that scripture verse that says, early will I seek you. I've always, I've always resented that Bible verse, early will I seek you, but till I understand that the Hebrew actually means earnestly will I seek you. So now, ah, earnestly, I can get along with earnestly. I'm talking about spiritual sleep, though. Spiritual sleep is apathy, indifference unconcern no conviction nothing matters but myself it's 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 all about me it's all about my comfort i'm going to stay in my comfort zone i'm going to stay in my bubble you are not going to break it you are not going to wake me up you know a lot a lot of church a lot of church people are like the frozen chosen the frozen chosen bless me if you can move me if you can see that's spiritual apathy that's spiritual sleep it's my own little world. You know, one of the things about phys physical sleep is that while we're sleeping, we usually don't know that we're asleep because we're like in this subconscious state. We, you, know, you don't understand. You don't, a lot of times we don't, we don't know we're sleeping because you're sleeping. And we don't realize it, but we can subconsciously do things while we're sleeping. We don't even know what we're doing, but we're, we're doing things while we're sleeping. 
Wives, maybe in the middle of the night, you've had to knock your husband and say, quit snoring, quit snoring, you're snoring. And, and he's like, I ain't snoring. <laughs> you're snoring. Wake up. See, he, he don't realize he, he snor- he's doing something that he doesn't realize he's doing because he's asleep. And that's true spiritually. You, may, maybe you're here today and you're asleep and you don't even know you're asleep. <laughs> you don't know you're asleep. What's worse is, is that you, you might be causing harm to yourself or causing harm to someone else, not even knowing because you're asleep. Spiritually asleep. I don't care. A lot of people talk in their sleep and don't realize. Any sleep talkers in here that would admit it? I know Katie admitted it today. You're a sleep talker. <laughs> sleep talkers. You know, uh, I always thought I wasn't a sleep talker, but before I came to pastor here in Florida, I was in Illinois pastoring, and I went to a conference with several pastors, and I roomed with this older season pastor the the like the old sage you know and and it's like oh wow i get to i get to be in the same room with him and you know maybe his his anointing will rub off on me and of course i'm this young guy it's been like 10 years ago and i'm just so so i'm trying to somewhat impress him with my biblical knowledge and i've got a lot of faith and so we're having lots of conversations good conversations and he's got his queen bed, of course. I got my queen bed, and you got the, you know how those hotel rooms are. And so we're, it, we, we, we're sleeping. It's the dead of night. Well, I don't know what time it was, but I, I woke myself up hollering in my sleep. And, and it was, and, and, and I remember it was just so vividly. I, it's, it's definitely quiet. I mean, you know, I mean, imagine being this guy, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, ah, ah. I don't know what I said. All I know is I, I hollered and I woke up. And I was so embarrassed, hollering in my sleep. And what, what's funny is this guy, this guy, here, here's what I heard when I did that. I heard. <sighs> <laughs> and then I heard like the sheets ruffle where they, they, they turn, you know, he turned over. And I kid you not, I was, I was so embarrassed. And I, I, I could not go back to sleep because I'm, I'm thinking, man, this guy's going to think I'm a freak, man, that I don't, I'm sitting there talking about I know the word of God and I confess this helmet of salvation and I don't want him to think like I've got, like, you know, I had nightmares and, and all of that. And, 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 and I, I was just so embarrassed. And, and, I, and I, I literally was laying there thinking, i got to tell this guy something that just so he won't think bad about it. And, and the thought literally came to my mind. I, this, is, this is how terrible I am. I literally thought about telling this guy, man, did, I, I know you were sleeping, but I felt the Holy Ghost last night, and, and, and I, got, I just got into the Spirit, and I'm, I'm thinking this. I'm going to tell this guy, I'm praying. I'm praying. I know you're sleeping. You're, you're asleep. But I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm like, man, maybe, maybe, I can, maybe this guy will think differently about me. He never said anything. I ain't never said anything about it let it go the point is there's a lot of spiritual sleep talkers <laughs> christians christians can pray quote the bible speak the bible read the bible in church but but so many don't even know what they're saying they don't know what they're talking about they're just going through the motions the word doesn't mean anything to them they're asleep spiritual Sleep. Many go to church on Sunday. We sing, we lift our hands, we pray, we praise, we worship, but we don't even know why we're singing, what we're singing about. The song we sang, Christ Alone, Cornerstone, and that don't mean anything. We, we, sing, we sing not for a moment. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in there. We, we sing those songs and it don't mean anything because we're, we're asleep. See, people, when, you, when you're awake, you, you can't sing that and not be moved. Not, not for a moment was I forsaken. God is in this place. I'm going to get me some of God this morning. I'm going to get the presence of God. Sleep talkers. Many, many Christians are asleep, and, and they don't know about the words they're speaking. They're speaking negative words. They're speaking words of, of cursing to their families 
to their children. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. With it we bless, with it we curse. And maybe you, you're a son, you don't realize the damage your words are causing to your kids. Oh, you're stupid. You need to get it together. You need to do that. Those are words of cursing. We don't say that to our children. You know, uh, I've heard stories about some of the, the going back to school and the, I guess, the Zoom, the online school where you got six or seven kids. And, and Michelle is teaching and helping some boys that she's keeping in their online and she, she tells, it, 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 to me it's, it's, it's sad because she told me about some of those kids and they're on there learning and in the background you hear their parents saying, come on man, you, you're dumb, Can't, don't you know that? Wake up, you know, and they're, they're berating their kids. And some of, Jen Cumbus was here this morning, she said, yep, that's the case. We don't speak those kind of words to our children, we speak words of blessing. See, when you're awake and when you're alert, you guard your tongue. You guard the things that come out of your mouth. Amen? Amen? Amen. You speak life. You speak blessing. You're, you're going you're gonna to make it. You're going to be a success. Oh, you're in a little struggle right now, but God's going to bring you through that. You're going to pass. You're going to be a success in life. You're going to be a, a soldier for the Lord. You, those are the kind of blessings, even to your spouse. You don't speak cursings to your spouse. You bless them. We bless the spouse. Other people walk in their sleep. I'm not going to ask you if you're a sleepwalker. There's nothing that's more weird to me than a sleepwalker. Now, I know I don't sleepwalk. <laughs> Katie admitted she sleepwalked. I think, I think you, you admitted you sleepwalk, go all the way down and fix your bowl of cereal, eat it, go back to bed. So, see, some people sleepwalk. <laughs> they get their food and... They don't even know what they're doing. They go back to bed. I've even heard stories about those who they've been sleeping. They go get their car. They drive down the road. They wake up and they realize, whoa, whoa, where, where am I? See, you can, if you're sleepwalking, you can get into some dangerous places and not even realize it because you're sleepwalking. The same is true of the Christian sleeper. Sleepwalking and in dangerous places and don't even realize it because you're asleep, because you're unconcerned, because you're oblivious to what's going on. Walking with the wrong crowd, you're with the wrong crowd, you don't even realize it because we, ha we have fun. Oh, we have fun. Maybe you're walking with the, the wrong, maybe you're dating the wrong person because you're asleep. Oh, I'll reach them for the Lord. I'll get them for the... And they're try, they trying to pressure you to do things you shouldn't be doing. And they're trying to pull you from the Lord. And you're just walking all along with them. And, and you, you, you don't know where... You don't have boundaries. It's because you're asleep. You're, you're asleep. You need to wake up or you're going you're gonna to end up in, in a wrong place. And that road will, will be your demise. Many, many are walking with no purpose, no passion, no zeal, like the walking dead, just, just walking around, just floating wherever the wind blows. See, I don't want to live. I want to be awake because I, I want to I know where I'm going. I want to have purpose with, with my walk, amen? I, I want to be walking with purpose and with zeal and, and with passion. Life is short. Life is short. I don't want to waste my time. You young folks, it, it, it just seems like a, a, a breath. <laughs> And you, you realize, wow, where's my life gone? And you get bald like me <laughs> and a pot belly and, you know, and, and it just seemed like yesterday, man, you're in shape and, oh, man, I can, I can take on the world. That's why we got to be awake. That's why we got to be awake. A lot, of, uh, a, a lot of people, another problem with people who are asleep spiritually is, is you try to wake them up and they get mad at you. Isn't that something about being asleep? See, I'm that person. You, you try to wake me up, I get mad at you. <laughs> but think about that spiritually. A preacher can preach the word, a convicting message, and, and a lot of times the sleeper, the Christian sleeper, will get mad at the preacher. Would you wake me up? How dare you? 
got to go find me another church. I'm going to find me another church. Yeah, so you can, you, you, in other, you're going to find you a church that'll let you sleep is what you're looking for. You're, gonna look, you're looking for a church that'll let you sleep. I got to find me a pastor that'll let me stay asleep. The, the great British preacher, one of my heroes from the 19th century, Charles Spurgeon, he was preaching a message one Sunday, a convicting message, and, and this is old English, but I like the way he phrases this. He says, the brother to whom this applies most will be just the person to fold his arms and say, we are well, and let us leave well alone. <laughs> I like that. In other words, here's what that means. It means that if you don't think this message applies to you, it applies to you. If you don't think you're the one that needs to wake up, it means you need to wake up. If you're pointing at your neighbor or your wife or your husband, say, you need to wake up. No, you need to wake up. That's what that means. And I think that's the word of the Lord. It's to wake up, to wake up, because after all, revival is about the church waking up from its sleep. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to the believers. He's writing to the church at Ephesus. He says, awake, sleeping church, awake. And then in verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Wise, walk wisely. That word circumspectly means walk carefully. Walk, walk with caution. Walk watchfully. Not as fools, those who sleep, but as wise. I got three quick wake-up calls that we need to wake up to. Number one, we need to wake up to obedience. Wake up to obedience. See, that's what this is all about. Ephesians 5 and 6 is all about waking up to obedience. The revivalist Charles Finney said, revival is simply a return to obedience. Returning to obedience. And that's a major issue with Jonah, his disobedience, right? It was his disobedience that led him to the boat where he fell asleep. It was his disobedience that caused God to blow the, 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 blow the wind, to, to get his attention. And maybe, and think about this, maybe the storm that you're in, and I, and, I've, and I know there's probably people in here in storms. Maybe the storm you're in right now is not a coincidence. See, there's three types of storms that people go through. One, we go through storms, issues, circumstances, because it's just life. Life happens. We live in a fallen world. We have problems. We have issues because of life. Another storm that we go through is, is sometimes caused because the devil is attacking. The devil is fighting. We're in a storm that the devil's caused. But another type of storm is a storm that God sends to get our attention because we're walking in disobedience because we're running like Jonah and maybe you're in a storm and you're blaming the devil you're blaming the devil for the storm like I said the devil does send storms but maybe could be that the storm you're in it's not the devil you're rebuking the devil and it's not even the devil who sent the storm maybe it's God blowing I, I, wake up wake up wake up so number one, we've got to wake up to obedience. Number two, we've got to acknowledge this, we've got to wake up to the schemes of the devil. Yes, the devil does send storms. We have to stay awake to the schemes of the devil. Do you believe in a devil and demons? Do you believe there is an enemy of the soul? If you believe that, raise your hand. The Bible says uh, the war is spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and, and powers. You know, I, I, I know we're in a... a in a political season right now, people are split. People, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, people, they're not talking. I've seen where kids are telling their parents, you ain't going to see your kids if you vote this way, and it's just crazy. And I put out a Facebook post that said, look, we got to understand, this, it, it's, not, it's not a political battle we're in. We're in a spiritual battle for the nation. 
a spiritual battle. See, see we, we got re- to wake up that we're fighting a spiritual battle. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. See, I promise you, you might be asleep, but the devil's not asleep. He's not asleep. He's working overtime. It says he's roaming, he's prowling around like a, like a roaring lion looking to devour somebody. See, I'm convinced that, that one of the devil's primary tactics, the ways that he, that he trounces and, and devours is by luring you to sleep. And if I can lure him to sleep, See, John 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If the thief, the the lion, the devout, if he can lure you to sleep to where you're oblivious, apathetic, unconcerned, don't you think he's got you right where he wants you? Don't you think you're an easy target for the thief to steal, kill, and destroy? The devil sings the greatest lullabies. He's lullaby. And good night. You don't need to come to church. Preacher will pray too long, and you won't. Your your pot roast is gonna burn. You don't need to pray. Go just go to sleep. Go to sleep, sleep. God, don't worry about your Bible. Don't worry about your Bible. You don't need to read your Bible. Uh, see, that, those are lullabies. He's trying to get you to sleep. I'll just, I'll just, I, I, I know, I know, I don't want to be too harsh about this, about online, because there's people that literally can't come to church. But if you're well able, physically able to come to church, a lot of times I've seen where online can become an excuse. Just stay at home. You don't need to come. You see what I'm saying? The lullabies. See, see he, he wants you to go to sleep so he can rob you. And steal, steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your marriage, steal your children. Just let your kids just do their own little thing. They're okay. You, you don't want you don't want to you don't want to set boundaries for your kids. You don't want to have rules and regulations because they might get mad at you and their feelings might be hurt. No, 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 is this how the devil works or not? He puts you to sleep. And, it, and, that, and it's so sad. People, people are sleeping and the devil's robbing you blind. Stealing, robbing. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a weird person in case you haven't learned by now. <laughs> and I stay by myself. And I got two nine millimeters sitting beside my bed. So it would not be a good idea for you to try to come in. I got a Glock and I got a Ruger. But the, the, the point is, is because I'm ready, if somebody, I'm ready, and I'm alert in case somebody, and maybe you need to get a spiritual Glock, and you need to sleep with a spiritual Glock, that, that I'm going to keep the sword of the Spirit in my mouth, and I'm going to guard myself with the armor of God and, and the shield of faith, and I'm not going to let myself go to sleep. If I see the devil roaring, I'm going to shoot the fiery darts of the Word of God at him, and I'm going to claim the promise of God and rebuke the de- devil. You ain't coming in my, you ain't putting me to sleep. You, you try to break in my house, dad, 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 in, Je- dad, 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 in Jesus' name. That's right. You like that? Dad, dad, dad. That's right. You, you need to throw those spiritual bullets. The devil's, the devil's been stealing long enough in Jesus' name. I'm tired of the devil robbing me. You're tired of him robbing you. Stay alert. Stay alert. Wake up. Wake up to the schemes of the devil. Number three, my last point. Wake up to the grace and mercy of God. So you know that God is a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's for you. He's not against you. He, the, the obedience to God, it's not because he's like this mean, angry school marm, hold out your hand so I can hit you with my rule, bap, bap. You know, no, he, he, he wants you to live in obedience because it's for your own good. 
He wants you to, to dwell in that secret place and, and be under the protection of God. He, he wants, it's for your own good. It, like I, it's for your own good that you follow the speed limit in Keystone and don't go flying through. It's dangerous if you go flying through. You could kill yourself and you could kill somebody else. That's why we, we stay in obedience. Wake up to the grace and mercy of God. After Jonah was thrown overboard, the fish swallowed him. He lived in the belly for three days. He prayed, he prayed, and that fish spit him out on dry ground. God got his attention. I guess so. Look at Jonah 3, verse 1 says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like, you just got puked out of a fish. Jonah, you going to do what I'm going to tell you now? <laughs> verse 3, so Jonah's like, yes, Lord. <laughs> he arose, wiped off the fish guts and the fish slime, and he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. And look what happens in verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God. <laughs> They believed God, they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least, from the king to the lowest peasant. They repented before God. These ter this terrorist, this thunder of terrorists <laughs> repented. Every last one of them were saved. Now skip down to verse 10. Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. People repented. The, the, the enemy of Israel, the, the wicked murderers, they repented. Asked God for forgiveness. God forgave them. He relented. But look at Jonah's response. Chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. He became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, oh, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, now look at this. Therefore now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. See, now we're seeing why, why he ultimately ran. He ran because there was so much bitterness in his heart. He hated Nineveh so much that he knew that if he went to Nineveh and he preached the word of the Lord, he knew that city would repent and God would forgive them and just flood them with grace and mercy. And he didn't want that. He ignored, that's why I, I ran. I ran because of your grace and mercy. And I don't want your grace and mercy towards them. He's acknowledging that the grace and mercy of God knows no bounds. It's limitless. But look at the Lord's reply, verse 4. The Lord said to him, Is it right for you to be angry? In other words, is it right for you to be angry at me because I'm so good? Is it right for you to be angry at me because I'm so gracious and merciful even to people you don't like? It's a shame that the story of Jonah ends with Jonah pouting and mad because God saved his enemy. And look, I, I am a true believer in the inerrancy, the inspiration, the infallibility of the Scriptures. I know you're not supposed to add to the Scriptures or take away from the Scriptures. But somehow, you, read chapter 4 for yourself. It's a weird chapter. Somehow, I just, it ends with Jonah pouting. And if I was to add another verse, it just seems to me like, like God saying, Jonah, wake up. Wake up to my grace and to my mercy. 
You know, the theme of the story of Jonah, it's not about Jonah getting swallowed by the whale. It's not even about the wickedness of Nineveh. The story of Jonah is all about the grace and mercy of God. It oozes gospel. It oozes grace. Starting in chapter 1 with the sailors, God's grace was poured upon the sailors all the way to the end. God's grace and mercy was poured upon his enemy. And Jonah's ultimate struggle was with God's grace and mercy. It was with God's grace and mercy. He felt he was deserving of it while his enemies were undeserving. We've got to understand that in the kingdom of God, God is an equal opportunity grace giver. He's an equal opportunity mercy giver. And he gives his grace and mercy to whomever he wills. Let us not forget that God sent Jesus to die on the cross for all people. For our enemies. Let us not forget that Jesus died on the cross to save our enemies, to save the murderers, to save the adulterers, to save the molesters. Jesus died for them too. He died for all. The Bible says it's not his will that any should perish that all should come to repentance. Maybe you're here today and like Jonah, you need to wake up to the grace and mercy of God. Maybe it's time for you to forgive and let go of the offense in your life. Release your bitterness toward your offender, toward, to the grace and the mercy of God. After all, aren't you glad that God forgave you? He took our offenses Maybe on the flip side, the devil has you thinking that you're a sinner that's past the point of no return. Why would God want to save me? Maybe that's what the devil's got you thinking this morning. I'm a bad person. I don't deserve to be saved. I'm not good enough. My past is too bad. I've done some bad stuff to a lot of people. I don't deserve God's grace and mercy. Let me, let, I, I, can't, I can't proclaim this loud enough. I just want, if that's you, I want you to understand no one deserves God's grace and mercy. All of us are guilty. All of us are sinners. God's grace and mercy is towards you, not because of what you've done or, or who you are. It's based upon who Jesus is and what he's done on the cross for us. We cannot save ourselves. We are unworthy. That's why we have God's grace. Because it's for the undeserving. It's for those who don't deserve it. It's for the outcast. It's for the sinners. And God wants to save you today if you would wake up to his grace and mercy. Quit running. Quit running. Quit. You, you know, you, you can't... So I've asked people, how do you know you're saved? Well, I'm saved because I do good. I try to live a good life. Do you know that's not how you become saved, by living a good life? That's not, that's not how you become saved. You become saved by quit running and trust in Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to save me. I know I'm a sinner. Change my life. I close with this because I was reading in Mark 14 this week and, and there's a heart, to me it's heartbreaking because Jesus, he's about to go to the cross and it's the worst night of his life and he takes a few of his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane and he sets those disciples down and he says, I want you to go pray and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pray. And so it, it, Jesus goes over to pray and if you know this story, he's praying so earnestly, God, I don't, I don't want to do this. I mean, Jesus struggled. <laughs> I don't want to do, in his flesh, he's God, but he's still flesh. I don't want to do this. Please take this cup away from me. And the Bible says that, that his soul was in such anguish that he began to sweat great drops of blood blood is is i don't know the i don't know the 
the term, but, it, but there's a term when you become so stressed and so depressed and your soul is about to explode that literally blood comes out of your pores. And that's what happened to Jesus. And he's sweating great drops of blood. So, so he stops his prayer for a moment and he goes over to his disciples. And when he shows up, those disciples, they're asleep. You know this story. They're asleep. <laughs> and, Je and Jesus, he wakes them up and he says... Can you not even pray for one hour? What, can, you can't stay awake and pray for one hour? He tells them, pray that you don't fall into temptation. I'm getting ready to go away. You're going to be on your own. You better pray that, 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 you, that you don't fall, that the, that the devil won't get you. And that, you know, they're, they're, I can just imagine they're looking at him and you can just see his face is crusted with blood. He goes back, he prays some more. He comes back again. They're asleep again. <laughs> he wakes them up. Can you not pray for one hour? Pray that you don't fall into temptation. I mean, at this point, I'm seeing the Savior dripping blood. He goes back. He prays. <laughs> and you, you, you know the rest of the story. He comes back. They're asleep again. And he says in verse 41 of Mark 14, it says, Then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? And then this just pierced me this week. It, Jesus said, It's enough. I'm done. It is enough. In other words, you just, you just going to stay asleep. But then he says, the hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. And I read that this week, and, and I'm, I'm just convicted because I'm guilty of being those disciples. Falling asleep on Jesus. Falling asleep on my Savior the one who bled, suffered, and died, and I can't even stay awake long enough to have some fellowship with him, long enough to get a word from him. I, I can't stay awake long enough to tell somebody about him. I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, and, and, he, and the blood is dripping down, and, and, and I see his, his nail-scarred hands and, and, and the crown of thorns, and, and I see that, and I'm asleep on Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8, 34, that Jesus right now, he's interceding at the right hand of the Father. Do you know right now Jesus is praying for you? He's in, it says he's there interceding. I'm praying for community church. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for this person. And he's, he's going to the Father. He says he's your advocate. God, I know that they're sinners. I know, that, I know, what, I know what they did last night. But God, remember your grace. Remember your mercy. I went to the cross. See my hands. See, see my feet. God, I covered their sin. I covered their sin. Oh, let your, let your anger relent. See, Jesus, he's interceding for us. And like the disciples, we're, we're asleep. We're asleep. We're asleep. Blood has no meaning. The blood has lost its power in our life. Hebrews says we've trampled on the blood there's no power the cross is meaningless Psh, doesn't matter i'm going back to bed where i'm comfortable because it's all about me it's all about me i don't want to be that person anymore do you wake up wake up wake up wake up wake up <laughs> Bow your heads, please. Jesus paid it all for us. And we've become numb. Jesus gave his life. And it's meaningless to us. God, wake us up this morning. Wake us up. Wake us up to your grace. Wake us up to your mercy. Yeah, we're undeserving. But God, I, I know that you, you love, you still love us. You still care for us. God, wake us up to obedience. We want to be obedient to you. 
It's for our own good. As, as a parent disciplines a child, it's for our own good. God, help us to be awake to the schemes of the devil. Help us to redeem the time. Help us to guard ourselves, guard our families. Put up the shield of faith. Have the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the helmet of, of salvation, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. The feet in preparation to spread and speak the gospel. Help us, O oh God, to be aware. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're listening online, and maybe you've never truly received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You might be here today, you might be watching, and maybe you need to come alive to the grace and mercy of God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, person, God loves you more than you love yourself. God's grace is flooding like rain over you. You cannot, you cannot sin past the grace of God. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. He loves you right where you're at. He loves you. He died for you. He wants to save you. He wants to change your life. I know the Spirit is convicting you. I know your heart's kind of pounding a little bit. That's the Spirit of God. Thank God. That that's, it's, it's a little wake-up call is what it is saying, trust Jesus as Savior. We're not good enough to save ourselves. We need a Savior. Right now where you're at, will you ask Jesus into your heart? And I'm going to tell you how to do that. Because I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Would you pray this prayer from your heart and ask Jesus to come into your life right where you're seated? As a matter of fact, church, let's all pray this together as a recommitment. And for those that are in here that may not know Jesus and want to receive Jesus, solidarity. Can, would y'all just pray this prayer with me? Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you went to the cross for me. You shed your blood for me. I know that my sins are great. But your grace is greater. Please save me from my sins. Only you can save me. Forgive me. I ask you to come into my life. and Be my Lord. And I want to live for you the rest of my life. If you really mean that, and see, that's, that's prayer. That's what prayer is. You're just talking to God. If you really mean that from your heart, he saved you. Your name is now into the book of life. It's all with the heart we believe, with the mouth confession is made. And maybe, Christian, maybe you're here today and you need to wake up. You need to wake up. You sense the Spirit saying, wake up. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, God Almighty, Lord, I just pray that you would wake us up. Wake us up, oh God, in Jesus' name, that we would walk carefully, that we would walk in obedience, that we would walk in your grace and mercy. Almighty oh, God, we want to be alert. We want to be redeeming the time. Father, I pray that, we would, that you would fill us with your spirit, fill the church, fill your Christ, the Christians with your Holy Spirit. Father, baptize us afresh, renewed power, renewed boldness, renewed joy and hope. 